All right, we're going to now look at uh, uh, this idea of completing the squares. In the previous section, we asked a question. Is if we have a parabola in this form, can we put it in this form? Uh, and the answer is going to be yes. Uh, just to recap, we really like this form because we can immediately look at this and tell where the vertex is. The value for x is going to be h, and the value for y is going to be c at the vertex. So if we can take something in this form, and put it in this form, then life is going to be good. And the question is, is how do we do that? And that's what we're going to focus on today. And the method we're going to be using is something called completing the squares. So let's take a quick look at this and get an idea of what's happening here. So coming back to this, the thing to note is I've got a 2 in front of the x squared. If I factor that out, so I divide everything here by 2, I'm going to have something like this. And I'm going to use this method called completing the squares on this part right here. And so what do we have? If I look at a different expression, okay, suppose I have, that doesn't look very good. So suppose I have something like that. If I FOIL that out, my expression looks like that. And the idea is I want this thing here to look like this thing here. And what I'm going to rely on is a different idea. And the different idea here is the following. So what's important is if I have two polynomials, um, suppose I do this. And suppose I know that it's equal to in some general form or some general way to the following. In order for these two parabolas to be the same, right, I want this parabola to be equal to that parabola. This term right here and this term right here, those two things have to match up and be the same. Likewise, this term and that term have to be the same. So, again, if these two parabolas are the same parabola, this has to match up with that term. And then finally, this term here has to be equal to this. So I can immediately look at this and say that a equals 1, because ax squared equals x squared. b equals minus 6, because the minus 6x has to equal to bx. And then finally, this term has to equal that, so c equals 9. Okay, so what does that mean? So let's come back to our original question. And what is it I want? So I have y equals <coughs> 2. I factor that 2 out. So I get this expression. I want this thing to be equal to that in some sense, whatever that means. If I FOIL this out, I get that. Okay. Now, this term right here and this term right here have to be the same. So I immediately get that x squared equals 6x. This term right there and this term right there have to be the same. So what do I get? I get minus 6x equals minus 2ax. From this, I can, this has to be true for all x, so I can divide that out. I divide both sides by negative 2, and I get that a equals 3. Now we have a problem, and that if a equals 3, and then it has to be 9, and there's no way that I can make that match up. So here's what I'm going to do, is I'm going to make this mostly like that. So let's see. So coming back to this expression, what do I have? I have x squared minus 6x 
plus 7, according to this, that thing has to be a 9. So if this was equal to plus 9, everything would be fine, but it's not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a 9 there, but if I add the 9, I also have to subtract the 9, because I need this whole expression has to equal that whole expression. Okay? So here I have x squared minus 6x plus 9 minus 9 plus 7 is the same thing as this. This part right here now looks like x minus 3 quantity squared. So what do I have? Go back up to here. This is 2 times. This thing is now x minus 3 quantity squared. Now I've not used the minus 9 plus 7 yet. So my expression now looks like that. Okay, so now let's come back up to here and expand this out. So if I simplify this, minus 9 plus 7 is minus 2. It's still not quite in the form we want. Remember I want a times this plus some constant. So if I uh, distribute the 2, I get the minus 2 times 2. I now have that. So my original expression, or this, I can now write in this form, or what we call vertex form, I can immediately tell you that the vertex is at 2 minus 4. And because that thing is positive, if I were to graph this thing, I know that it's going to go upwards like so. Okay. Right. Let me look at one more example, and we'll see how this, this goes again. Okay. I would like to know uh, what that is in terms of vertex form. And I would like to know where the vertex is. I can immediately look at this and say it's going to be something like that, but I really don't know where this is. This could be over here, here, there could be no roots, I don't know. Okay, so let's see what we can do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out that minus 3. do this, this now becomes a minus 2x, because minus 3 times minus 2x equals 6x. If I factor out the 3 from there, that becomes a minus 1 third. And what does I want this thing to look like? I want this thing right here, oops, I want it to be in the form somehow like that. Looks like that. And again, for these things to be the same, that coefficient has to equal that coefficient. That's already done. The minus 2x has to equal that. And I'm not going to really worry about what that is just yet because I'm going to add and subtract the right thing to give me the number that I want. So let's see. So now if this is equal to this. My minus 2x is minus 2ax. Okay, this is true for any x, not just x equals 0, so I can divide out that. I can divide both sides by minus 2. And I get my a is equal to 1. Okay, so what does that mean? That this part right here is going to look like x minus 1 squared. This is my a squared, 
So this term up here, I really want to have a plus one here to make it match those two things. It's not there, so I'm going to add and subtract it. So let's come back up to here. So I'm going to rewrite this expression. I need a plus one there, so that this thing right here is a nice square. If I add one, I have to subtract one. And now I'm going to do the algebra. So this becomes x minus 1 squared. Minus 1 minus 1 third is minus 4 thirds. I now multiply the minus through here. I distribute that. So this becomes a plus 4. And coming back to here, I got lucky in that. This is not too bad of a picture. This is at 1. That's at 4. So my vertex is at x equals 1, y equals 4. And because it opens downwards, because this is negative, I know there's got to be at least two roots in this parabola.